Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the MOOC in Tractomics course. In our last lecture, we studied that the major strength of surface plasma resonance SPR biosensor is their versatility and ease of use. The SPR platform allows the ligand and allyte interaction for a wide range of molecular weights and varying affinities and compatibility for small molecules dissolved in organic solvents. These biosensors play a very important role in biological research to monitor macromolecular interactions in real time without the need of labels. It is one of the reliable platform to determine affinity, kinetics, concentration analysis and immunogenicity for a variety of interactions which we are going to discuss in today's lecture. We will also learn a little on how to analyze the data and perform data analysis using software. Let us now continue our discussion with Mr. Lalit Kishore to discuss various applications of SPR. So, Lalit, welcome to the discussion on SPR technology. Thank you. Going on to the next application, I always think that concentration is very uh, less studied, but it's very important, is because um, if you look at concentration analysis across the world for proteins, there is no way that someone can measure active protein concentration without having calibrants in their hands. Right. Whenever you give a student a protein and say, please measure the concentration, the first thing that he will ask you is for calibrants. Right. He will ask you for standards. And the problem with these standards is that sometimes they are not available. Sometimes they are extremely expensive and being proteins like you know, sometimes they degrade, they are not, yeah. not stable. So there is a great need for having a concentration analysis technique that does not need calibrants. Mm -hmm. And that is where Beacor comes in again. Uh, Beacor does something that is called CFCA which is calibrant free concentration analysis. Mm -hmm. And so within 5 minutes if you have a specific binder for a protein, you can actually calculate the concentration of that protein without the need for calibrants. Mm -hmm. And since you already seen in screen 1 where we talked about specificity, we are talking about specific binding. Right. So what is measured is not just total protein concentration, specific. what is measured is specific active protein concentration. I think that is very strong application of it because uh, many times you would like to know how accurately you can determine the protein concentration. Absolutely, especially in quality control and in filling in, in biopharmaceuticals again where right. people need to exactly estimate how much they are actually filling in the final vial right. that actually goes to the patient. Um, they need more accurate methods of measuring active protein concentration right. and that is where I think Beacore will play a very big role uh, in letting people estimate that active protein concentration. Now once you have seen concentration, the next thing is immunogenicity. Uh, worldwide with the increased biopharmaceuticals drugs everywhere need to be tested for immunogenicity. Right. Immunogenicity is about direct measurement of anti-drug antibodies in the uh, which which should be measured in serum. Mm -hmm. It's also about bringing a regulatory framework into a system. Right now it, we talked about only technology and science but suddenly when it comes to drugs regulators come in. Right. So can we actually accurately confidently measure anti-drug antibodies in animal sera or in human sera at clinical trial levels. And BA core can actually be used for accurate measurement of anti-drug antibodies and for immunogenicity testing of biopharmaceuticals. So that's another major application of BA core as it comes in. The last application of BA core, uh, which if you remember when I talked about in the first slide about specificity, now if you have a heterogeneous mixture that is flowing over a ligand and something within that mixture is actually bound. And you see a curve and you know that something has bound but you don't know what it is that is bound. So you can use a technique called SPRMS where you can take the bound analyte 
separate it into a vial and then actually take it to a, a mass spec and identify the protein. So in addition to doing all that it did before, now you can actually also find out what is it that is bound. So definitely it's very important because many times you will not know like what the unknown target is which is interacting or binding. Right? Yes. So if you so don't know, if you have this unknown target, for example, if you have a receptor and if you have cell lysate right. or if you have some kind of a homogeneous tissue lysate, right. which you are flowing over the ligand and now you can actually find out what that what is. So uh, it is used in applications like ligand fishing, for example, where you're fishing for a ligand. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of examples that... But in MS, you will uh, definitely require protein above certain threshold, right? So how you overcome that issue because the binding will uh, not be minimal. Give you enough protein? So one thing is that this is a very small interaction happening. So the amount of protein that you collect may not be sufficient. The only way you can overcome it is by actually doing it multiple times, okay. collecting enough so that you can actually get some kind of an MS response. And that is what most of our uh, users do is that they run the same binding assay about 10, 20 times mm -hmm. and collect the bound analyte and then take it to an MS and then get their result. So in BioCore, you have a way to collect the flow in the flow cell. Yes. And then actually you can accumulate that in multiple runs. Multiple runs and then take it. Then concentrate that and then you do for the yes. mass spec characterization. Yes. So just to summarize, again, I will just go back to my uh, the first slide that I showed here. Uh, which is here. These are the these are the six things that a BIA core can be used for: specificity, kinetics, affinity, concentration, immunogenicity, and mass spec analysis. So that is those are the six broad applications of um, BIA core SPR technology. I think those are very important because many times uh, a good decision about these products beforehand about characterizing these proteins can save you a lot of money, a lot of effort down the road because Absolutely. If, if you can do those experiments in the beginning. Most often when we actually talk to pharma industry, uh, you know, we tell them that BIA core or SPR technology is not for success but more for failure. Right. Only thing is that we say that it is for early failure mm -hmm. and it is for cheap failure. Right. So do not spend too much money on something that does not work. Right. Uh, might as well fail early. Right. So that is the basic reason why SPR should be used. I think that's very important. So can you uh, briefly tell us about what are the major instrumentation available from the Bayer Core technology currently for doing the surface plasma resonance based experiments? Uh, there are basically four different Bayer Core instruments available. Uh, there's a very small Bayer Core which is called the X100. Uh, you can see it on my pitch. It has two flow cells and it can do some beginning analysis and then you have the Bayer Core 3000 which is an academic favorite. A lot of academicians like it. A um, lot of customers in India who are academics have the BIACO 3000. Then we have the latest, which is the BIACO T200. Very special, again, because it has all the things that the BIACO 3000 has, but it is regulatory approved. So if you are a company that works with FDA, that works with EMEA, that works with you know, DGCA or some of these regulatory authorities, then I think that you should be using the BIACO T200. The BACOR 4000 has 20 different immobilization sites on it and BACOR 4000 can be used with multiple 384 well plates with robotics. So if you are a company that has, you know, extremely high throughput screening, if you are a company that does a lot of immunogenicity experiments or if you are doing batch testing or release testing using BACOR, then you should be using the BACOR 4000. I must say that most of the customers in India use either the BACOR 3000 or use the BACOR T200. So how easy it is to uh, do these SPR experiment and uh, especially the kinetic analysis by using uh, some software available from BACOR? The, um, the most important thing in a BACOR experiment is actually the um, experiment design. It's very easy to do the analysis and let me just show you an example of a typical result okay. and let me show you how the analysis works out. Sure. So if you can see my computer, so I'm going to open a typical BIA code result and here is a BIA code result. Uh, this is a BIA code result where uh, five samples of different concentrations mm -hmm. were run over a fixed ligand which was on the chip and now I'm trying to do a kinetic analysis. So if you look at these five results, I select them and I show the results and these are the results. Now this is what a typical result looks like and there's nothing to be worried about because it's, it looks odd. Uh, the idea is that 
your results are all embedded somewhere here these two big peaks that you see are regenerations so the first thing that i do when i do the analysis is actually select the regenerations which i don't need and cut them out so i cut them out here so i say cut and then the rest of the results so you want to adjust your response axis just my so now i have five different concentrations one two three four five in different colors and you have this is the association phase and this is the dissociation phase now I'm going to just baseline this result. So I select the baseline here and then I just go to the adjustment of Y axis and I say zero at the average of selection and then I say add as new. And now all my five results are shown here. Now I'm going to do a quick kinetic analysis and it's really extremely simple to do a kinetic analysis because all that I do is say calculate. I say kinetics simultaneous K on and K off and I have already done the cutting and the Y transformation so I say next and then if I want to I can go and adjust the start and the end time so I, I can actually move this to adjust the start time and the end time of association and dissociation which I sometimes do but I think this is pretty well picked up by the software already so I don't need to do much I say next and I enter the different concentrations of each of the samples which were run. They're entered here. Now this is very important. These concentrations are known concentrations which, which you ran, already on, which you, are, you actually made the concentrations right. of the analyte and then ran them over the ligand. Sure. So you would do that. Now one of the things that's important here is you choose the uh, model. So preferably, it is always better, whenever you do characterization, the more you know about your system, the better characterization results you get. Right. So in this case, suppose you do know that it's a one-to-one -one binding, then you would choose that binding. But if you want to, you can actually change the, uh, the binding model. It could be a bivalent analyte, it could be a bivalent ligand, right. it could be a heterogeneous ligand. So depending on the model you choose, so you choose the model that you want to here, and then you say fit. And what happens is curves get fit and the results are thrown up. So your K on and K off are displayed here. So it's as simple as that. So all you need to do is take a ligand, immobilize it on a chip, right. run about five different concentrations of your analyte over the chip, and this simple, ana and each of these results, if you look at the x-axis carefully, it's zero to 600. That means each one of these runs, the entire run right. was 10 minutes, yeah. and you ran five samples, so it was five into 10 minutes, so 50 minutes, with the time taken in between the runs, about another 10 to 20 minutes, about one hour, 10 minutes, one over 20 minutes, you have the results and you have already characterized your uh, results because you have the K on and K off calculated. And you can also quickly check how good your results are by quickly checking the residuals and you can see the residuals here. The chi-square values are really between minus five to plus five percent. So extremely good fitting reactions and a very fast analysis that gives you K on and K off. Yeah, I think it's very uh, extremely fast and uh, very good. Very way of easy to use. Very easy to use software for your analysis. So yeah, it was very uh, useful and informative to see the analysis, like how uh, easy it is to perform the kinetic analysis. Can you give some specific example of doing kinetic analysis by uh, using Bayer system? Um, let me show you one example, and um, this again goes back to why kinetics is important. Kinetics is extremely important in BIACOR analysis. Um, and let me show you an example. So here's a pitch about three slides on kinetic and affinity analysis using BIACOR. So if you look at this slide, now here on this slide, you have three interactions which are captured. You have interaction one, which is captured in blue, interaction two, which is captured in red, and interaction three, which is captured in black. The important thing about all these three interactions is that all these three interactions have the same affinity. They have varying K on and K off, but they have the same affinity. And this is important in drug discovery because let us say, for example, you were looking for pain relief. If you want pain relief, you want a drug that acts fast and that stays on for a very long time. But if you want a sleeping pill, for example, you want a drug that actually acts slowly, but stays on for only a reasonable amount of time and comes off fast enough. So kinetics is very important in choosing a drug candidate. Now this is an example where if someone chose just on the basis of affinity, all these three would have been the same. 
but since they would make their choice based on kinetics they can actually decide based on the k on and the k off now here is a real life example in the next slide which i show you which is a publication from amgen and from david mishka of university of utah where actually amgen uses this data directly to do their clone selection so they are actually doing maps selection of maps selection of clones for maps and if you look at this so clone number one and clone number two have similar affinities but you know if you look at their on rate and off rate there's a tenfold difference so if you look at these two clones for example which clone should they go for they should go for the clone which is having more kinetically relevant properties if they use only affinity for making that choice then there is no choice at all they are no, no both the same right. so this is a live example of where kinetics data is actually being used to capture information regarding k on and k off and then make a more educated decision based knowledgeable on. decision on which map to go forward with right. i think it's very uh, interesting to see this because you will feel that if you just rely totally on the kd values right if you do not go yes. individual on the k on and k off yes so distribute that kd value into k on and k off and make a more knowledgeable Better decision is. yes so uh it was a very interesting example uh to appreciate the power of kinetic analysis right uh can you just brief us about uh, what are the major uh, limitations or shortcomings of various surface plasma and resonance based technologies absolutely so like any technology this technology should not be viewed as a silver bullet it does have shortcomings uh one of the significant shortcomings being that uh if there is any structural differentiation in the protein uh this would not be able to capture it it's a mass based sensor so any structural changes will not be captured um there is also a problem that there are situations where you are unable to immobilize the protein that you have onto the chip right. so you might have to use some capture techniques to uh, to do that uh there is also this big question about you know so you answer these questions about interaction you answer questions about whether the interaction happens or not how fast how slow how strong uh, how much right you say whether it is safe or not with immunogenicity and you know what is binding but then sometimes you want to ask the question why is it binding right uh, and why is it binding is answered by structural studies or thermodynamic studies so that is where i think bcor can give you a little bit of a direction uh but i think you should do more of um, you know an nmr study or you should do micro calorie metry and that's what will probably give you more answers on why the interaction is happening so further in depth studies will be required on those Absolutely. interactions so process. when you have an interaction happening and when it's happen when it's happening very fast right. now why is it happening fast is transition state thermodynamics so you will have to ask questions in thermodynamics to get those answers so sometimes further study is essential and bcor kind of stops with these applications would you have any uh, final advice take home to the uh, absolutely students? so here's um, here's basically three rules that we have in bcor the first rule in bcor experiments is bcor technology is extremely easy to understand uh bco technology is extremely easy to analyze uh, a lot of time must be spent on experiment design uh the first thing that i would do if i were working with bco is spend a lot of time on very carefully considered experiment design the second thing that i would do if i were conducting a bco experiment is that i would make sure that i have an extremely pure ligand that i will put on the chip and that is extremely important the last thing that i would consider and this is true of all experiments and i'm sure you would right. agree with me is that it's garbage in garbage out uh, so make sure your sample preps are correct and remember that this is an analytical instrument as unlike many other techniques in biotech this is an analytical instrument it is a mass sensor at the end of the day you could call it an extremely sophisticated weighing machine so if you put something on it it will give you the weight mm -hmm. uh, it's as simple as that only thing is you have to do it right um so i would say that make sure that your sample prep is perfect your experiment design is perfect make sure your ligand is pure so i think you very rightly mentioned that uh, a good experimental design identifying the good ligands working out the chemistry for immobilization absolutely as well as doing the very good sample preparation all of these are very essential component for 
doing any successful proteome experiment and especially the surface plasmon type of experiments. Yes. So thank you very much, Lalit, for uh, discussing about the Bayako technology with us today. Thank you. And I hope it is uh, informative and useful for my students. Thank you. Thank you. Through our discussion on surface plasma resonance technology, we learned that there are three major advantages of this approach. First, the kinetic measurement in real time is the biggest strength of this method. Second, monitoring the adsorption of unlabeled analyte molecule to the immobilized ligand surface. And third, its ability to detect weakly bound interactions due to high surface sensitivity of SPR sensors. In summary, in last two lectures, we learnt about SPR technique, its applications in different fields of research and a little overview on data analysis. Thank you.